Today we're going to talk about capital gains tax. So many people get capital gains tax confused or may not understand all the details of capital gains tax. So that's what we're going to make it more clear to you today. So first, let's talk about who capital gains applies to. So if you have a non-qualified investment, a taxable investment, a joint investment, individual investment is how it may be titled. This is any investment where you have not paid tax on any of the growth yet. So you may have put $10,000 into this investment. You know, that may have been after tax money, meaning you already paid taxes on it. But as this $10,000 grew to $12,000, and now you decided, oh, I want to take out my $12,000, you've got to pay capital gains tax on that $2,000 of growth from $10,000 to $12,000. The original principal that you put in is not going to be taxable. You've already paid your taxes on that. So my question is, is what tax rate do we have to pay on that $2,000 of growth? Is it just at our federal income brackets or is it at a separate capital gains bracket? As you can imagine, it's at a separate capital gains bracket, which is what I'm going to talk through here. So we typically see people with this capital gains tax issue if they've had highly appreciated assets over time. So maybe you bought Apple stock a long time ago and now it's grew over time. Or maybe you had some company stock that grew over time. And so those are the, the type of planning that we're going to be looking at uh, in this video here today. So let's talk through the capital gains bracket here. So most people think that, oh, on that $2,000 gain I just talked about, I have to pay 15% taxes on that $2,000 of gain. And I would say that is true for most people. Although, if you do the right planning today, you could put yourself in this 0% tax bracket in the future. And so if you look at why I say the majority of people are in the 15% bracket is because look how wide those brackets are. But if you can do correct planning and show your income lower in retirement, then we could find ourselves in the 0% tax bracket. Now, if your income is really high, you may be in the 20% tax bracket, and you also may be subject to something called net investment income tax, which is an extra 3.8% on top of that 20%. And you could even find yourself in that net investment income in the 15% as well, causing you to pay 18.8% tax rate on any capital gains there. So I want to make sure you understand how capital gains work for planning purposes. So I'll actually share a client example here. We actually had a client, he had Apple stock and he bought it for $20,000 up front. Well now that Apple stock has grown to $120,000. So if he sells Apple stock, he's got $100,000 of capital gains that he has to pay taxes on. And also understand that the rates I'm talking about here are long-term capital gains rates. If you sell off that, if he sold off that Apple stock within a year and he saw that much growth, obviously that's probably not going to happen. But if that happened, he'd have to pay it at ordinary income tax rates, which are the federal income tax rates. But because he's held it for over a year, we're talking about capital gains. So in his instance, he could have sold that the year he told me about it, and he could have paid 15% tax bracket tax rate is what bracket he would have been in for that year because he was still working. And so he was considering doing it because he wanted to get rid of Apple stock. And that could have been a good strategy to do because what if Apple stock went bankrupt? What if Apple, something happened to it and the stock went down? Well, sell it when it's high, right? Cash in when it's high, get your chips off the table is one of the considerations there. And that would have been, that could have been a good idea. And so he was pretty aggressive and I told him, well, what if we just waited one year because you're going to retire next year and you're not going to have any income because you just told me you wanted to delay Social Security till 70. You just told me your pension doesn't start until 65. And so you're going to need some income to live on and we're going to have zero income from a tax perspective. And so I told him, let's sell off Apple stock next year and then we will utilize this full amount of the 0% tax bracket. So if you know how this works, this is based on your taxable income. So he was married, $89,000 is taxable income. But remember, the standard deduction comes out before the $89,000 here. So he actually had $27,700 plus $89,000. So that meant that he could basically sell off almost $120,000 of capital gains at 0%. And so we sold off the $100,000. We kept him in that 0% bracket, and he paid no tax on Apple stock. The reason why this was so important is because if we would have done this any other year, like when his pension started or when he started to take out money from his other investments, he would have found himself in the 15% bracket again. 
because people typically are in the same tax bracket in retirement or pretty close to as when they're working is what we see with Social Security, pensions, RMDs all coming together. And so because we knew he had this little gap, we wanted to maximize that 0% bracket. So that's just an example there for you. Another example that we look to do with our clients is when we look to invest in non-qualified investments that have capital gains treatment, we typically are trying to defer those capital gains. We're trying to defer those capital gains for years where we may have a lower income, where we can utilize a 0% bracket, or we're trying to defer them so that, hey, if they pass away, that would be a stepped up basis to their spouse or to their kids or whoever that may be, whoever that beneficiary is. So that could be another strategy that you look at. And the way you would do that is maybe you just invest in individual stocks that aren't going to spit out capital gains every year. Uh, maybe you pick stocks that don't have as high of a dividend. Maybe you just invest in index funds you know, with lower dividends that aren't going to you know, make trades within it like a mutual fund. Uh, you know, we typically advise against mutual funds in this type of strategy uh, because mutual funds are going to have phantom gains. They're going to spit out gains every single year ongoing. So those are some considerations for you to have there. So my main point is just make sure you understand how capital gains work. Understand that it is 15% for most people, but it could be 0% if you do the correct planning. And the last point I want to make here is that these capital gains rates could change. The tax codes written in pencil is something I always say. And they've made a pretty hard push over the last few years to make capital gains rates the same as ordinary income rates. I don't know if that's going to happen. It hasn't happened yet. It's not set to happen. But just be aware that they're trying to make changes to capital gains to make it less advantageous for you. So that could be another consideration is maybe you just start to utilize the 15% because that may be the lowest that we see here in a capital gains perspective over time, especially if you're a higher income individual. So hopefully you enjoyed those capital gains uh, tax tips, and we'll see you on the next video.